Hey everybody, Mr. Moki Moki this week, and uh, yeah, episode 28 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. Uh, I'm not sure about you guys, but um, I did like this episode, I did like the duel, um, mostly because of the ending, um, that's what really kind of hooked me, uh, and it, it really asked some questions or made you think about like, what is really going on in this show, um, and uh, that's why I kind of really liked it. Um, we'll just start off by saying the visual effects for this episode was, was on par. It was, um, it was awesome. Um, uh, not too much that I'm going to nitpick, I guess. Uh, but, you know, it was a solid episode and I liked it. Um, personally, I thought Faust would have lasted longer. Um, cause he did seem like, you know, the strongest of the two when, uh, both Byra and, uh, Dr. Genome. Uh, both got like two episodes to duel, um, but you know I'm not I'm not too mad about that because we we do see Yusaku um, duel a lot, um, and I guess the two episodes for Blue Angel and for Go was um, needed because we don't get to see them duel that much. So as their as their own duels by themselves, uh, I think it was good. So one episode for this duel was fine. Plus plus we got some stuff with. Um, Naoki or like Lonely Brave last episode so and that episode was fucking fantastic so I don't mind that at all um yeah other than that um I, I guess I just I guess I just thought that Faust was going to be a stronger opponent um because now it seems like these these one-off villains are well one-offs <laughs> um and I was kind of hoping that they they weren't going to be but uh that's fine um, it's, it kind of sucks because we kind of start, started to humanize with them. We started to like, think like, wow, these guys aren't like, except for Dr. Genome, he's, he's a fucking asshole. But, um, Byra and Foss, like we thought, you know, these guys, these guys actually have the best of intentions, um, which is weird that they didn't do that for Dr. Genome, <laughs> um, because it was, it was almost like we were, we wanted to hate Dr. Genome and we did. Uh, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know why they did that. I, I didn't know why they just didn't try to humanize Dr. Genome as well, along with Byra and Foss, because now it kind of seems, um, <laughs> now he kind of seems out of place, but that's fine. Uh, moving on, um, the duel, uh, was kind of, it was, it was average, I guess. I guess that my favorite part was, um, was uh, Power Code Talkers reveal, and you guys know I like the Code Talkers. Um, they're just their designs and everything. It was it's just awesome. Uh, I was really excited to see that. Um, just the way that co the the Power Code Talker did his effect, and that he like did his like final fist to the monster at the end. It was it was cool. It was well animated, and I really enjoyed it. Um, just gets me so excited, and we got to see D Code Talker again. Kind of been. A little bit since we've seen him. I guess the Akira duel is the last time we've seen him. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. I uh, I enjoyed this duel for what it was. It was, uh, I guess it was just meant to show Yusaku or like start making Yusaku question, you know, like what what is Ignis, you know? And um, I guess... I guess Revolver kind of did that, but now we're getting we're getting into the nitty gritty of it. Like, um, we kind of know that you um Playmaker, sorry, not Playmaker. We kind of know that Ignis was the one to give Naoki the Cyber's Wizard, um, and it's it's weird because you want to think like, did did Ignis really just set that up so he could duel a Knight of Annoy? um? Or was just Ignis fucking around? Um, Cause if that's the case, I don't know. I don't know why Ignis would do that. Like, does he like not care? Um, but like, he just finds Naoki expendable. Like, that's why he was just like, oh, I'll just send this kid because he he wants to do something heroic. Or was he trying to fulfill Naoki's dreams? Um, I don't know. Now it's. Yeah, I guess we'll get the answer soon enough, you know. I can't really delve too deep into it. Uh, but, I don't know, you may, you start to question about, like, what is Ignis's motives? But during the duel, he really did seem shady. 
Like Ignis really seemed shady. Like he was trying to dodge everything that Faust was saying. He was just like, um, if like Playmaker was was like, okay, so then if you didn't send the Cybers Wizard, then who did? And then Ignis is just like, what? Well, why does that matter? Like, just let's beat the Knight of Annoy. Like you, it makes you think that Ignis is just doing this so that he could have set up the duel for the Knight of Annoy. Um, but if that's the case, I feel like there was a better way to go about it. Um, anyway, and then Faust at the end is like, if you don't, if you do this, um, like humanity's future is over, um, and stuff like that, like not word for word, but something around those lines. And Ignis completely stops him right there. Like he just, uh, ignores him and like cuts him off. He's just like, playmaker, let's just finish this like right now. Um, and that's super fucking shady. Um, and then Playmaker listens to him, like, <laughs> it's so weird, because, like, when does, when does, uh, Playmaker actually listen to what Ignis has to say, um, and so P Playmaker doesn't want to hear Faust out, because, you know, I, I guess it's emotional, too, right, he's a knight of annoy, he wants to focus on, you know, the knight, what the knights have done, um, and he's, he's mad because he doesn't want to listen to what they have to say because they, he feels justified in taking them out. Um, so I guess it kind of makes sense in that aspect. Um, yeah. And then I think, I think we learned that Faust kind of knows, um, who, who Playmaker is. Cause we, he goes into the flashback and we see like Playmaker, well, no, Yusaku as a kid dueling. Uh, and like they're watching him and then Byra and Faust are just kind of like looking there like like worried about like the little kid Yusaku even though he's failing and I don't know it doesn't look like they wanted to do it um and it seems like Faust kind of regrets it but he was like because he regrets it because of what happened with Ignis and such so obviously all of that is connected um and then uh, one, one like visual aspect I wanted to talk about was when Yusaku goes into the data storm for his uh, storm access. Um, the storm was dark, and I understand why it was that, because of uh, the Knights of Annoy Gale storm disruption thingy. I can't even remember the full name. Um, but like the, the data storm was like a dark tornado, and I was just like, oh, that's actually blowing in here? Um is that how that works? Uh, so I was really surprised that like Playmaker was able to use his storm access because I thought it would have been sealed as well. But you know, whatever. And then on top of that, it was like a dark tornado. So I expected like something negative to happen. Um, I'm just a visual kind of guy. So I, I thought like, you know, because it's like a dark storm, there might uh, something like go like go wrong because it's like a dark storm. But I don't know. I guess not. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, other than that, uh, the the ending of this episode, we find out that you know somebody does kind of know who Yusaku is. I guess like this, it, it looked like they had white hair. Can't really tell if it's male or female. I'm guessing it's male, um, but I'm guessing that uh, this person can put two and two together. That person is playmaker. Yusaku is playmaker, um, uh, but. We'll we'll find out. Um, I'm really interested. I don't think it's revolver. Um, people might think it's revolver at the end, um, but I don't think it is. Uh, the hair didn't really look that way, uh, and I don't think revolver has white hair. Um, so I think it's a new character. Whether it's this per whether this person is with the Knights of Annoy or Soul Technologies, or it's like a completely different person who is just fighting for themselves, kind of like Emma, um, then, yeah, then that would be really interesting as well, um, but I feel like, may well, maybe it is a Night of Annoy, because it did have, they did have a camera inside, uh, Byra's room, so, makes sense that it is a Night of Annoy, um, though, then again, like, it could be somebody who's just spying on the Knights of Annoy anyway, they could have figured out who the Knights of Annoy are, and then started to spy and visually look on the Knights of Annoy to try and bring them down as well. Um, so maybe it's somebody who's who's like Playmaker. Maybe it's somebody who was taken in and is also looking for revenge. And then when they see somebody like Yusaku going in there, it's just like, oh, there's somebody like me. Oh, cool. Um, 
And so, yeah, maybe maybe that's the case. Uh, but you guys can tell me your theories down in the comment, se comment section down below. Um, one final thought for the video before I end it here. Uh, the preview did not look promising at all. Like, it was literally just Yusaku talking, um, Kusanagi talking, and then uh, Ignis talking. So it was literally just a back and forth conversation. Like, that preview was so boring. And it has me worried that we're dealing with another recap episode already. Um, so that's pretty upsetting if that's the case. Um, I mean, I haven't read the summaries, but, you know, if it is, then it is. And then you won't be hearing from me next week because I definitely do not want to do a video on that. Um, but I might, if it is a recap episode, I think I might do like a top five. Um, so, yeah, if... If it's if it is that, then yeah, I might do a top five of something. Let me know if you guys want to hear a top five about anything, or a top ten, um, like my top five Yu-Gi-Oh protagonists or whatever, or my top five monsters, or whatever. So I can do that. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys want that, and I'll get to work on it. So I'll talk to you guys later. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys did, and uh, peace.